All right. All right, we got a battle happening here. I'm about to hit sunlight. Who's gonna handle it better? The sun went behind the clouds. Oh, the timing on that. Can you tell which one is the ghetto fabulous Canon camera? Just budget minded for squirrel feeding hobos. Or the other, their flagship, embarrassing flagship admittedly, although a hero's on its way. Can you tell? One of them is the RP, one's the R, and if there's not much of a difference, then you just saved yourself $40,000. Let's find out. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. Thank you, Camera Canada, for making these tests possible. Let's all go to Camera Canada. A leaf fell on my arm. You don't believe me? Oh, come on. Come on, show it. It's not good content. I'm not gonna lie to you, they're both heavy as shit. Unusable pieces of trash. Oh, but I like them. They grow on me. I keep wanting to use them, especially with the 35mm 21.8. I have that in my bag. And we'll do a little vlog test with it, but they're phenomenal, easy to use cameras with a decent look. I just, I can't get log to look good. I try to grade it, it doesn't happen. It won't happen, it never will. Canon RP on your right with the expensive 15 to 35 2.8 lens at 24 to match this, <laughs> the Canon R with the 16 to 35 24. So we 24 would it up and I zoomed into 16 mil over there. So we should be pretty equal. Same exact profiles, faithful with same exact settings. So nothing should be different other than the quality of the sensor and possible digic processing abilities. Backlitten sky, ooh, advantage Canon R. So let's test the dumpster stabilization of the Canon RP. It's just lens stab right now. So no digital, we'll turn digital on and enhanced. And I think that's where we're gonna see the biggest difference between the R. Look at the giant thing. I tell you, all this needs is a different lens, a little lighter one. You might have something, but you don't. Versus the R, and really what we're testing here is just which lens has better stab. So I imagine the 15 to 35 would, but we could just be seeing how my right arm is stronger for no apparent reason. I certainly don't use it more often for any purpose. Now, while I hate to abandon a perfect shot when I've achieved one, dumpster between a python, that's not a python. Oh God, it's a pylon, you piece of sh Let's turn on the digital stab of both and see who's smoother now. Okay, digital stab on, level one. We'll do enhanced next. This is what I've noticed. When I put enhanced on, on the Canon R, Glide cam, like almost a gimbal, especially with that lens. We'll see if it was just the lens. But then I tried it on the M6 Mark II and the Canon RP, unusable. They're basically very shaky and no matter what mode you're in. So I have a feeling Canon cripples their lower end. I would do it too, just to save money. I understand it. I ain't mad at you. Do what you got to do. You'll be fine. I like it. How come you lowered the price so much since launch? Why didn't you charge it? <laughs> Goodbye, sky. <laughs> oh, cannon just blows out the sky. I should try exposure comp. I might do that. We'll do it. But let's just see what happens in bright sunlight. Who recovers faster? Looked pretty similar. Backlitten sunlight. Who's winning at life? Okay. So we test the Canon R stabilization right now. Digital on by itself. Because if you do it side by side, you crop in, you lose the Warner. Warner, why am I making a video when I'm dumb? 
the corner wobbliness. Could be Warner. You could call it that. This hurts the shoulders. Not mine. I have the monkey strength program. Versus the Canon RP with its digital stabe. Is it performing as good? Now that it has the better lens, I have a feeling a lot of user error here. I think that lens might be so much more superior to this one that all my theories now that Canon cripples their lower end stuff with the processing is obsolete immediately. Let's switch to enhanced to prove it. All right, it's a little tight. It's a little tight, but we have to do this to see which is smoother. So if my theory's right, the Canon R is much smoother because it's a higher end camera, it costs more, and it has a better processor in it. And that's why it has all this power to stabilize better. And on their lower end models, it just doesn't work. If that theory is wrong and the RP is more stable, it's just that this lens is so much better, the 15 to 35. It's heavy, but they're both about the same weight. It's not much different. I'll put the weights up. Hold on. It smells like urine near a dumpster in an alley. So the 15 to 35 weighs that and the 16 to 35 weighs that. Very similar with the adapter. That's why it, it's almost the same, like 100 grams less, barely. But when you switch the bodies, so the Canon RP, which is lighter, but with the heavier lens, versus the Canon R with the lighter lens, there's your numbers for the total weight. You're not saving a lot. So we're on the Canon R, enhanced stabilization. How smooth is it? It should be pretty darn smooth. Although my technique may not be the best. It may not be the best, that's user error, but I'm gonna have the same exact faulty technique on this. So we'll see, we'll see. Is it smooth? And we'll do the RP next, and then we will find out the real truth. Is it the lens or the processor? There's a pebble in my foot. Now we're on the RP. Enhanced stabilization, but a worse lens, a worse processor. I mean, a better lens. Uh-oh, I've confused myself. Along with you, you've learned nothing. Is it as smooth? Because I was seeing some jerky shit along with warpy shit on both the M6 and this. So we will see, won't we? Yeah, we will. We're seeing it right now. I'm near the urine smelling dumpster again. Why do people come here? It's not a toilet. Let's do a little autofocus test. A little unfair because the R should be better, but then it has an adapted lens. So will that offset the possibilities? Let's try it. I, for some reason, had enhanced digital stabe on during those autofocus tests, but for both cameras at least, so I'm a moron twice. We're on the Canon RP now with the 35 mil, 21 point, at 24? Why? What kind of why? Change it. Oh, oh. Wow. 
Oh my god, right now. Oh, the cinema. I can see jerky shit happening. We're just with lens stabe, no digital yet. Somewhat decent vlogging length. Kind of. It's a little tight. We're approaching Sony ZV-1 levels. It could be done. It could be done. So I'm gonna go back and forth with the R. Same lens. So I'll switch to the R, just lens stabe, no digital. And then I'll do digital here. And we'll do boom, boom, boom. All right, we're on the Canon R now with just lens stabe. There theoretically should be no difference in the shakiness because the camera's not adding anything. So just pay attention to the image quality if it's better or not. But once we put the digital on, then we'll notice it. We will feel it. It's too shaky, isn't it? I find Canon lens stabe is like nothing. Except in that 15 to 30, but the wide lenses don't need it as much. All right, digital stabe on the RP. Is it smooth? Now we can test for sure which has the better digital stabe because we have the same exact lens. It's somewhat doable. It's not that heavy. The RP in this little lens, we need a 24 mil, 1.8. I wouldn't mind that. Or two, 22. This is a bit much for the blurry background. Let's be real. I got the split again. I'm a mathematician. Four plus 17 is 91. All right, Canon R with digital stabe. It should be smooth. It is on the 15 to 35, so if it's not, that means this lens sucks. Or just the focal length in general does not bode well for digital stabe. Is it glorious? Or is it not? It better be usable. It's a little too tight, and it's slightly noticeably heavier. I notice it. But the tone, the absurd amount of tone, it's measurable. Okay, now we're on what Sony wishes they had done with the ZV-1 and put in a 40 mil lens. We got enhanced stabe on, just my head. It's an entirely egotistical shot, but is it smooth? Is it glorious? Is it handling the sun streaking beneath the leaves? Beneath? Oh boy. And here's where it all pays off. Enhanced stabilization. 35 mil Canon EOS R. Blurry background enabled. Gimbal-like abilities. Just cinematic. I almost tripped. Did it register? I doubt it. <laughs> so now we know. Is it better than the RP? If so, that means Canon just didn't put in a very good processor in the RP, and that's why it's so cheap. It's not really a big conspiracy. You know what we've never tested? Canon has these optimal lighting enhanced type of thing. I think it's similar to Panasonic's iDynamic feature, where it just like it increases dynamic range. So let's see if it does. So right now we're clipping that sky and it's off. Let's turn it up to high and see if there's any difference. All right, we're up to high. Exposing for me, background gone. There's some blue. Is this mode good? That's good exposure. I like Canon exposure. It works pretty well but it always prioritizes the face, which is what you want. But I wouldn't mind you leaving some of that in there. Like that's decent, but then you're gonna take it too far and then goodbye blue sky. I was trying to test out the HDR mode, but I can't figure out how to turn it on. It's just grayed out and I don't know why. So the Canon RP lets you do it, no problem. So Canon RP wins this whole thing, this whole thing. So what do you think? If I was to buy into this system, I'd definitely go with the R just for my perceived better abilities, just the better stabe, if that was true at all. It's just, I don't like getting the budget version of anything, but the lenses, they lack. I like this one for the studio, fantastic lens. Autofocus as well, blur the background, but I would love to see a setup F2 primes, maybe 1.8. 
I notice it's it's even too much. You could do a small set of 2.8 primes for the vloggers. I would dig it. 24 mil 2. Point, hmm. With your digital stave though, that crops in. I think 24 will still work. Maybe. 20 mil 2.8. In fact, let's do a little test. Right now we're at 15 mil Tony 2.8 on the RP. I think this is too wide for vlogging. I got it on the tripod. Let's switch it up a notch. Here's a roughly 18 2.8. That's looking pretty fun. I wouldn't mind that focal length. So you could give me an 18 2.8 prime stabilized. Because I don't know what your IBIS is going to be like that. Is there a bug on the lens? That's cute. Here's 20 mil. We're getting a little tight. We have the digital stabe on minorly, not the enhanced. That's still doable. This is just too heavy to actually do. But with a light just prime, that would be light. <laughs> Jeez, a light prime's light. You're groundbreaking. Now here's a much ignored 22 mil Tony 2.8. I think that might, I think 20 mil is the lens I would get for vlogging if it's light enough. Sometimes it's weird, like the 28 is lighter than the 24. And then the telephotos, like, why is there this telephotos really heavy, and then it gets lighter, and then it gets heavier again, the wider it gets. Why is there a conundrum of conspiracies? Here's 24 mil. With digital stay, that's a bit tight, actually. I actually wanted to test that lens, and I regret it. I regret wanting to test it. It's doable. It's similar now to the Leica 12 mil Tony 1.4. This is the same exact focal length we're used to on the Olympus. My shoulders are burning. All right, last one, the 28 mil, because I debated that lens too. They have both the 24 and 28 stabilized prime, and they're both pretty light. The 28's a little lighter. Oh, I could handle that. With the digital stave, it's not too tight. Don't let them say that to you. Oh, it hurts. The pain is real. Oh, wow. <laughs> so let me know which focal length you thought was the best out of all that from 15 to 28. We've already seen 35. That was ridiculous. So let me know what you thought of the RP versus the R. Was there much of an image quality increase? Same settings. To be worth the extra money and extra weight. I think there would be, even though I haven't seen the footage side by side yet. I think go for the R. That's the one. Star 5, I mean. Oh. All right, we're done. Thanks for buying a Camera Conspiracies t-shirt. Subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you in the next one.